La compagnie, Next, la compagnie Next Stage Interactive est une jeune boîte de production de jeux vidéo montréalaise prometteuse. Elle, a, elle développe des produits de qualité, ses employés sont dévoués, ils travaillent de longues heures pour offrir des produits exceptionnels à, à leurs clients. D'ailleurs, le, euh, le jeu Bosses 101 euh, est en nomination pour un Video Game Award euh, prochainement et s'est classé au top 6 euh, des jeux les plus vendus sur le App Store. Cette compagnie a le vent dans les voiles, elle a commencé avec 3 employés, maintenant rendue à 15 et elle continue à grandir. Cependant, une telle croissance doit être contrôlée pour, pour assurer le succès de la compagnie dans le futur. C'est pourquoi le groupe ABG Consulting, composé de mes collègues Gabriel Boulet et Eric Abdoubou et moi-même, Joël Taillefer, sommes ici aujourd'hui pour vous présenter nos recommandations pour, euh, contrôler la, pour contrôler la future croissance de NSI. La présentation se fera en anglais, cependant, euh, ne vous gênez pas pour poser des questions dans la langue de votre choix à la fin de la présentation. Alors, without further ado, let's go right in. The first step in determining the future, uh, the future growth potential of NSI is to first determine which industry the company should go in. Currently, the company is, uh, is in the mobile gaming industry, but it, it's very different from each of the industries named above, uh, namely the console gaming, computer gaming, and social gaming. So I will walk you through each industry and then explain to you uh, which one we should, we, uh, the company should focus on. So, the video game industry as a whole is expected to grow to uh, $82.5 billion by, 2000, by 2015. That's the Canadian video game industry. And it's a very cyclical industry, namely uh, because of the consoles and the new phones getting out, uh, with have, which have different possibilities in terms of expanding the gaming experience, and also, uh, usually the life cycle would be about five to six years. Now, The console gaming industry is very specific. Uh, it's a very saturated industry uh, for casual gamers. Uh, the, Wii, uh, the Wii being a new console that got out about uh, six years ago, uh, it, it took about half, uh, one and a half of the, of the casual gamers. Uh, and as I mentioned, the cyclical life of the consoles uh, make it difficult for the, for, the, uh, for the developers to be able to make new games by the end of the lives of, the con of these consoles. So it's an industry that's a bit harsh and very different from what the company is doing right now. So it's something that we looked at and maybe wasn't an industry that we were trying to get in uh, for, for the growth potential. Now, computer gaming is a niche market. Uh, usually high-end computer gear costs a lot of money and it requires, uh, it's not as easy to get access to this industry versus mobile or social gaming. So it's something that is a bit more difficult and something that NSI is not necessarily used to work in. So it has a lower reach uh, to a normally broader audience that the company is used to have. If we look at the next one, social gaming, uh, namely known, for example, games such as Farmville, uh, often games that are on social networks, uh, that are usually free to play, but uh, the, the company would make revenue out of advertising or in-game items that could be bought uh, in the game. It is, it is a four billion industry in Canada compared to uh, the console industry, but it's less saturated than the console industry. So it's a good thing, but at the same time, Uh, the mobile gaming industry is the one uh, that NSI focuses on, namely because uh, no, it, is, it is its current market and has a broader audience now that most, uh, most of, the, of the clientele now, now has a smartphone. Uh, the games developed on, on the mobile gaming industry are now more available to a broader audience, including uh, a lot of women also. 30% of the revenues, however, need to be given as royalty. Uh, for example, for apps uh, the, developed on the App Store, which is something that we took into account in our recommendation. So now we'll move on with our analysis of the different options that were offered in the growth potential of the company. Um, Antoine, one of the three uh, co-owners, proposed many different uh, suggestions, and one of them was to look for a loft instead of uh, renting. If the, the company wants to grow and have more employees, so we're currently at 15 employees, 
beyond 18, uh, they should definitely go with the love. And it's almost certain that they're going to grow above that uh, amount, that uh, number of employees. So we strongly suggest to buy the loft uh, this year. So the loft will uh, put a capitalize the loft of uh, 1.5 million on the balance sheet. And also with this, there's going to be a debt of 1.2 million at an interest rate of 5% in the next five years, which gives an interest expense of $60,000 per year. Um, also, this debt is on uh, 20 years, and the difference between the debt and the, the cost of the loft, which is uh, $300,000, we can easily get cash from uh, the, the cash that NSI has. And for the other recommendation, uh, most of the employees, uh, including Adam, propose to go with uh, Bosses 102, so the next version of Bosses 101. Since we can capitalize on the knowledge and the, the popularity of Bosses 101, um, this is also a great recommendation. So it can be produced in half the time since most of the knowledge uh, is already learned. And, um, and yes, so uh, the number of hours uh, is going to be uh, divided by two. So for the design and the programming. And we did our calculations based on the fact that uh, people work 50 hours per week the whole year. So this means that they work 2,600 uh, hours that are, uh, that are worked, but not paid. So uh, we assume that 40, uh, 40 hours uh, per week was paid. So uh, based on that, the design requires salaries of $70,000 and programming $106,000. Um, and also the promotion revenues. So we're going to do the promotion on our current devices, on the, the gaming. So this is going to reduce the promotion revenue uh, by $20,000 per month over five months. So reduced by $100,000. And also the revenues, um, which is the good part of this project, is that there are 60 to 80% of Bosses 101 uh, revenues. So it's between 13 and $17 million. And also in the revenue part, there's the tax credit allowed on the eligible labor uh, expenditures. So this amounts to $66,000, uh, assuming that uh, the project uh, is done in French as well. So in total, this gives total costs of $276,000, which is really uh, low compared to the total revenues of between 13 and $17 million. And this gives a net present value between 12.8 and $17.2 million. Now, a second project that was suggested by M. Patrick is the development of a console game. So this is a completely new industry compared to what we're already in. And um, this might be a bit risky. Also, uh, we were mentioned that Etienne uh, worked in another company where he had the line of codes, so the basic line of codes, in order to do this. So this could reduce the programming hours by 30%, but this is really risky uh, in, in the sense that we might be get sued and there are contingencies uh, for this. So we only assume the programming that it would be 150,000 uh, hours. So in the design, uh, the design and programming hours were calculated the same way as buses 1 and 2. So they are between 1.4 million and 1.7 million dollars and programming 4.2 million dollars. Uh, then the manufacturing and distribution cost, uh, they cost five dollars to have a tangible, um, tangible game. So we assume that this cost was it on all the units sold, uh, all the units sold. And there are two options. Either the project is going to be done by Christmas uh, 2013, which we, we will be able to sell 400,000 uh, 400, units for a total of, uh, no, sorry, sorry, that's not sell. So, that's a manufacturing. So manufacturing, if we're able to uh, sell before Christmas 2013, we're going to make, the, the costs are going to be 2 million. But if it's, if it's in 2014, the costs are going to be 1.25 million. And the marketing, there are 20% of the production costs between 1.1 million and 1.2 million. So now for the revenues, uh, if we're launching before Christmas 2013, we're going to make total revenues of $16.5 million, which is a lot greater than uh, if it's launched in 2014, which only makes, um, which still makes uh, revenues of 11.2 million. But so that's why there's a pressure to launch before uh, Christmas 2013, which is really soon, so that may not be possible. 
So the total cost between eight and nine million dollar, revenues between 13 and 18, which gives a net present value of between five and 9.6 million dollars. Gabrielle discussed the alternatives of the Bosses 102 project and the new console game. I will now take you through an analysis of the Forever Play and the sub-licensing game agreements that, um, you are consider that you're considering going through for the, um, for, for the future. Now, if we look at the Forever Play acquisition, Forever Play is a company that is in the same industry as NSI. They're producing, um, they're producing mobile games and they're also producing social free-to-play games. Now that's fitting in with the strategy that you're looking towards. You know, keeping within the mobile game industry because that's, your, that's what you're good at and that's, what the fa that's the fast growing market right now. So if we take a look at the background analysis of the company, you have a gross margin of, that improved from negative 56% to negative 4.8% over one year. A net margin percentage that improved from negative 33% to negative 6 point, negative, negative 0.6% over one year. And you have a high debt to asset ratio of 4.38 percent. Uh, sorry, 4.38, and you have a return on equity, a return on assets of negative 17.6 percent, which is not great. So, looking at this, looking at this quick analysis, there, the conclusion is that they do have highly improving performance. However, the structure of the company is not doing great at all and at this at this time they do have they do have um, a strong management who is someone who's someone who's been in the business for 15 years and um, he, he seems like he knows what he's doing he seems like he's improving the company over over one year by by a lot however they are having major difficulties so that brings us to the risks of the company you have you're trying to acquire a company that does have major liabilities at this point in time they have a going concern where they may not be able to, they well they most likely will not be able to last into the future if they don't get an investment to improve their products right now what are their products they have eight active products in the market and if, we, if we're looking at those products, they are doing well, they have good feedback. However, it's unfortunate that they're not getting the support they need behind them to push them into the consumers. They're, the average, um, the average rate at which the players purchase on the, on the game, uh, on the gamings, the mobile games, is 4%. And that's, and the average is between one and 5%, so that's it's an extremely good sign about the product. The question is getting those products further into the market. So we need, so we need to consider that as we go forward. And having the major liabilities, you, if, if this acquisition does go through, if you do decide to acquire 100%, then you're going to be taking on those liabilities and any further contingencies that could be there. The, the owner or the manager wants to sell off the company, he brought the offer to you. If he brought the offer to you, maybe there are some other issues or other liabilities that we don't know about, other contingencies that should be looked into before anything is decided. So what is, what is the transaction? What is NSI going to receive and what are they going to be giving up? So NSI is going to, NSI is going to be receiving 100% ownership of the company and they're going to be able to further manage it and put any inflow of cash that they need to and then be responsible for that inflow of cash. That, the company is currently worth $650,000 per year and the other, you're also going to get synergies that you're going to be able to, um, uh, to, work, to work on over um, with $150,000 per year. So the total amount that you're going to be receiving is $800,000 per year. However, it's important to note that the $650,000 per year that the company is currently worth is it's something that will likely change. Because they have eight active, active um, products on the market, those will be a those will be likely to increase in success because you're, you're putting in the $250,000 investment to give the company a push into the market, to give those products a push into the market and increase the users and increase, and as you increase the users with these kind of products, you're going to be increasing your revenues. So that's likely to increase highly. And what is NSI going to be giving up? You're, you, you're, you, uh, the offer is for you to pay $500,000 of cash for the company, plus giving up 15% of NSI, which will come to about uh, which will come to about 700, 705 uh, sorry, yeah, 705 million dollars. It's important to note that these are not discounted these are not discounted numbers at this point. They're not in perpetuity. This is a per year a per year figure. Um, and okay, so um, considering considering those amounts, if you look at the total, so um, the um, Sorry, the six hundred fifty thousand. Sorry, the eight hundred thousand dollars, and then the seven hundred and five, seven hundred five million you're getting up. The number on the screen is actually is, is incorrect, but you're going to have um, 
you're, you're likely going to have a positive MPV if you look at it at an 11% discount rate, considering how risky the company, the, how risky the industry is that you're working in. You're looking at a positive, uh, positive um, MPV if you look at 11% discount rate in perpetuity. Um, now, if now if we take into consideration, um, if we take into consideration all this information, it is it is a it is a project that you uh, that you should highly consider um, going into. You have enough money to cover any liabilities that could come up. Um, from the project. Now, if we take a look at the at the project of the sublicensing game, so, so sublicensing sub sublicensing the production of a game. So you're trying. Uh, you have the company DreamWorks, a movie producer, who wants you to produce a game for them, a, a game for their most recent movie, an animated movie. Now, this could be a great potential for you guys because the company is going to be your company is going to be receiving funds from DreamWorks to finance the project. You're gonna re, you're gonna have five around $5 million to do so. And it's very difficult to get funding in this industry. Therefore, let's look at, let's look at the, cash, the cash inflows and cash outflows. Um, the, if you look at a 90% chance that they're going to be receiving $5 million if the movie does well, and a 10% chance that they're going to be receiving $2.56 million if the company does not do well, your expected revenues are $5, are $5 million. However, Apple is going to receive 30% 30 30 of those revenues for it being um, an, Apple, an, Apple, an Apple app. And NSI is only going to be receiving half of that, so they're receiving $1.75 million. Now, the cash outflows are 77% uh, of the salary um, of the program of the programmers, and then 154% of the 150 154% of the salary of the designers. Unfortunately, we, um, the 5% increase in the salary that should be given is not incorporated in those numbers. Um, so the total salary that they're going to be receiving is a hundred. Um, that they're going to be giving up is one hundred seventy-three thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars. So therefore, you have you also have a cash inflow from any tax credits that you're going to be receiving. So that's twenty-six uh, around approximately twenty-six percent, I believe, because this is a um, a, type, a type two project. So that, therefore, you're going to get approximately four th forty-five thousand dollars in tax credits. So your undiscounted cash flows are going to be around one point six two million dollars. That, which is a very low cash inflow for the company for the amount of work they're going to be doing. However, the most important part is that Antoine does not believe that he will be able to provide the quality on this project that should be given. And, in, and as quality is, and providing amazing, entertaining games is one of your core competencies, we do not recommend risking that in going with this project, especially if it's for such a low cash inflow. And there are the, the benefits of the, of the alternative projects are more likely to outweigh the benefits of this project Considering um, considering the what you what you would be giving up in terms of your um, quality. The human resource management is also a very important issue since the company's main asset is its employees. Also, the company is a very fun place to work at. Uh, the employees are able to be creative, and how the company is setting itself apart from the big players, such as uh, let's give a name out like Ubisoft, for example, is that their employees have more take in the product that they create because simply it is a smaller company, and that the the owners actually encourage the employee to be out there and provide the creative input. So that's a good thing, but this also means that your uh, human resources need to be managed carefully. For example, uh, currently their salary is 10% over or uh, below, sorry, the average in Montreal, and that's one of the issues that uh, the employees face. So we were uh, because of these growth opportunities, new employees uh, will have to be hired in order to develop new products. So then we have to there's a trade-off to make between hiring new employees or maybe increasing the pay to the current employees to make sure we, we retain them. That's a very important thing. Two options were provided. Uh, either we increase uh, the, minimum, uh, the minimum wage by 5%, or we use a headhunter firm to find new employees for, uh, for the new project. And then uh, the headhunter firm would get 10% of the employee's salary. We strongly believe that uh, the 5% increase in the, in the, ways, in the wages sorry, should be done, especially since a few employees, uh, two employees have, been, uh, have left in the last six months. Just want to make sure that uh, they understand that their input is valued and at, and at the same time that the company is giving it back to them. So now we'll pass it on to the outsourcing. Um, currently, the maintenance is done by two uh, junior programmers within NSI. Uh, we suggest to outsource uh, this to an uh, India company because um, currently the costs are about $96,000 for the two programmers within, and these people could take the time to do to work on other projects. Whereas uh, if we outsource, it's going to cost $70,000 for the first year. And the $15,000 is not going to repeat itself in the future years. So it's going to decrease in the future years. 
And finally, management has expressed its concerns to evaluate the performance of the company. Uh, we noted that there's no KPIs, key performance indicators, uh, currently set in place. Uh, there is a software called, uh, it's called a dashboard, so it's basically uh, the uh, you compare the sales with, uh, the, let's say, the labor hours or uh, different, different metrics, it's like the, the square footage also, to see if the new location is actually producing better uh, than, than, the, than the previous one. And that would allow uh, the company to assess the productivity of uh, the project that it's currently working on and the employees uh, at the same time. So uh, the company should definitely look into implementing this system so that everybody gets to, uh, to see uh, the, uh, the trends over the years in the performance. So finally, uh, our final recommendations. We're going to go into bosses one and two since uh, it doesn't require a lot of uh, working employees and it's going to generate a high NPV and we're not going to go into uh, console games since although it gives a high NPV, um, the, it's not it's saturated, it's a saturated market. We will acquire the Forever Play and we will not go with the Dreamworld subleasing agreement. We'll also outsource depending on the quality that it gives us. We'll implement a new dashboard for KPIs and performance indicator. And finally, we'll finance through the sale portion of the company. Thank you so much for now. We'll forward to questions. I'm a little bit surprised to see acquisition of Forever Play in your recommendations, considering that you said it's highly risky. Maybe a guy is hiding some something and he wants to sell us his his his, his, his bunch of troubles, uh, and, and, and that he's in debt. And that you told us in in the, in the presentation that uh, we would put a lot of cash flow in there without having any guarantee of of actually getting those six hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Can, can you can you? Uh, sorry, sorry. This was actually a typo. We're not gonna, we're, we're not acquire Forever Play. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Thank you, thanks. Um, let's talk about Dreamworld. You said you do not recommend to follow that that project, but uh, looking at the figures, it looks like the expected return on investment is like 10x. So why is not that interesting for the company? Well, the expected return is maybe 10x. However. Producing the product is the first and foremost thing that should be taken into consideration when going with the project. So if it is if it is strongly believed by Antoine that it, it will not be it, he will not be able to produce a quality product and NSI is backing this is backing this product in the market. If they cannot produce a quality product, it would not be worth risking the company's uh, risking the company's reputable uh, reputation. In, in the market at this time, especially since you're growing from this stage, from bottom up, you're only at the beginning. However, if we are able to come to an agreement with DreamWorks that we can postpone the deadline to come out with the product, we feel that it is a, it is a sh uh, strong investment to go with. Now, obviously, this is not an option because the release of the game has to be strongly tied to the release of the movie. So that's one specific condition of the market when you can't play with the, the things. Okay. Um, you say you consider to start buying the new loft. Um, to, so to buy the new loft, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's 1.5 million through uh, through uh, um, with a, just a down payment of 300 and uh, 1.2 million uh, there. Uh, wouldn't that be more interesting for us to just buy? The entirety of the of the loft with the cash we have in our bank account right now. It would be a possibility, but since it's a capital intensive industry, uh, we do not necessarily recommend this. It's a five percent interest rate. We consider that's reasonable for uh, a debt. Additionally, it's extremely difficult to get a loan in this in this industry, as Gabriel described. And by if we put in the if we put it in our own money, then. We're, we won't. This is a great way to access capital, and we, if we use our money, that can be used as great backup for the future. That would just be risky for for NSI. Have you considered the l'entreprise DE who will buy our shares, in fact, who value our enterprise at 30 million? Have you have you evaluated the possibility for us to dilute our nos actions, in fact, to go and seek financing? It's easy, and it seems to be an evaluation pretty high. 
Oui, c'est une bonne évaluation qu'on a regardée par rapport, euh, par, par, par rapport à ce qu'on avait dans nos chiffres. On a trouvé que c'est une bonne chose, mais en même temps, les trois fondateurs ne voudraient pas nécessairement diluer euh, le ownership qu'ils ont dans la compagnie. Euh, pour le moment, les stratégies qu'on a mises en place, c'était correct, on n'avait pas besoin d'external de financing, mais évidemment, la compagnie euh, a une grosse croissance. Ben, ce serait une bonne offre euh, si ça reste sur la table pour, pour les années futures. Mais définitivement, si on peut garder l'ownership à l'intérieur de la compagnie, je crois que ça serait plus en, en ligne avec euh, ce que les, 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 les owners euh, pensent. Regarding the wages, you're, you're, uh, you're advising 5%. Our team knows we made millions with this game. They know they're underpaid. What's your thought process? We have the cash to give them 15% in bonuses. What's your thought process behind giving them only 5%? The, we, we thought about that because the problem is we didn't want to shift the focus on the employees and the quality of the work that they do because they currently work, like, let's say, 50 hours per week. They put more work than they are actually paid for, and they seem to enjoy it and actually like the, the, the product that they're making. So we were afraid of the, uh, the intrinsic rewards that we would give them versus the intrinsic. What I mean by that is, if, should we focus on the compensation or actually on the achievement of the product? So maybe if you would be looking for a, a bonus, Maybe something about the overall sales of the company, maybe there's a bonus that could be split between the employees versus maybe all, uh, focusing on the pay directly. Uh, we think that it could shift the interest of the employees uh, towards more uh, of the period rather, rather than the creativity and the work that they produce. Okay. It was like 10 Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.